Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. And probably the most important event is coming from the western part of Ukraine. According to information we have, uh, one full F-16 squadron is already located on the territory of the Ukraine. Up to 20, 12 combat and 3 training aircrafts. By, by mid-spring it is planned to transfer another squadron. So this is the reason and that is why the Russians were attacking Stara Konstantinov, Dnipropetrovsk and Krivoye Rog during the previous few days. They were trying to get those F-16s. So the new phase, the new um, uh, episode, the new layer of escalation has started. Now we will see F-16s in the sky for Ukraine. Obviously the first days they will try to, uh, to use them very carefully and most important that there are very high chances that yesterday when we were talking about the destroyed Russian uh, 3 Su-34 there are very high chances that those Su-34 of the Russian Federation were shot down by the Ukrainian F-16s. Very interesting information so let's follow. During the previous night, the Russians made another attack against Odessa with Geran, uh, with the training centers in this area, but uh, we don't know the results of those attacks. Probably today, the Ministry of Defense will provide us more details about those attacks. Now we are moving to the situation on the ground, and first we are going to talk about South Donetsk direction, because the most important updates is coming f are coming from this territory. I have adjusted and updated the map. Uh, currently I am showing Zvirinets, this part of Ukraine, this part of the territory is on the, in the grey zone, because we still haven't received any geolocated confirmation of Russian presence there. We just have uh, some updates from Deep State map, from Syriac map, but it is not enough to color this territory in red. So that's why I'm calling, I'm showing this territory as a gray zone. But as if you remember, as we discussed, probably the Russians managed to penetrate much more to capture much more territories. And there are very high chances that currently the Russians are located somewhere along this line. But for now, without any geolocations, we will keep this map as like, like, like this. More interesting updates are coming from Marinka. The Russians continue their offensive operation as we discussed and as we projected in the previous videos. And uh, if you remember, we were talking that the main purpose of the Russians is to establish control and to get this road. This is like the first barrier that the Russians can use as the barrier, as the area that um, they can use for main fortification belts to reduce the Ukrainian possibilities to move and so on. And today we got another update from Syriac map and from the deep state map and according to them as a result of Russian offensive operation the Russians managed to establish control over this huge territory. It's a very interesting question whether the Russians managed to capture this territory during the storm operation or the Ukrainians took a decision to withdraw their positions and move further in the direction of Georgievka. Because as you know we have a lot of updates that the Ukrainians are withdrawing their positions. We have the Ukrainian update about withdrawing positions from the western part of Marinka. We have have updates of withdrawing Ukraine positions from Zvirinets towards Novomikhailovka. So the Ukrainians are retreating all over the combat line. And few questions. Why are they retreating? What, why, what is the reason? The absence of the military aid, the Russian pressure or absence of mil mobilization law. Very interesting. Now we are moving to Avdiyevka direction, where we also have a lot of very interesting updates and details. According to information we have, the Russians during the previous night attacked from the line Vadiana Opetna in direction of uh, Avdiyevka, the 9th um, quarter, this block. And the sources are saying that the Russians managed to bypass additional one from 1 to 200 meters. And now we got the final confirmation of complete Russian control over Vinogradniki in the industrial area. On this video for example we can see uh, the soldier who was moving in the edge buildings of this village and according to him this is the, f the this used to be the final Ukrainian positions on this direction uh, so we I, I believe that now we have a like right to color this territory in red because according to that geolocation this entirely this area entirely is under Russian control. 
Now we are moving to the northern flank. We have also few updates. As you can see, we have lots of Russian advances, lots of Russian attacks. Uh, the most important one is coming from the um, chemical plant and the uh, Terikon. The Russians are saying that they managed to advance uh, from this territory to the south, and as a result of offensive operation, they managed to establish control over additional lines and the strongholds and the trenches of the Ukrainian forces. So this is something like a progress of the Russians during the previous night or something. Uh, the Ukrainians uh, reported that they launched counteroffensive series of counteroffensive operations once again in direction of Stipova. Well, currently, we don't know the results of that uh, counterattacks, but the Russians also are admires that they also launched attacks. So there was like a close combat one on another somewhere on the western line of uh, uh, Stipova. So this is the currently the combat line uh, and the Ukrainians and the Russians are fighting on this direction. Very interesting updates are coming from Ochiretina. The Russians are saying that they managed to advance additional 200 meters in direction of Ochiretina along the railways from Krasnogorovka uh, to Ochiretina. Furthermore, the Russians are saying that they managed to uh, add um, additional 200 meters in direction of Novokalinova. So when talking about the, uh, let's say, the updates, uh, basically we can say that as a result of clashes, the Russians managed to establish control over additional territories like this, yet without any geolocated confirmations, and uh, the Russians managed to take control over additional few hundred meters along this tree line further in direction of Novokalinova. So this is the progress. As we can see, the Russians are trying to develop Krasnogorovka foothold to the north, to the northeast, to the west, to the northwest, to the west, and to the south. And as we can see, uh, they are managed to develop in each direction for a few additional uh, hundred meters. Now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction, where we also got a lot of very interesting updates and details. The Russians continue bombardments, the main Ukrainian positions on the hill on the north of Bogdanovka. As we discussed, this is the priority target for the Russians. This is the vital question for the Russians. If they want to take control of Bogdanovka, first they need a solution. How to suppress, how to force the Ukrainians to step back, how to capture this, um, let's say, hill. And on this video, for example, we can see how the Russians were bombing the Ukrainian once again, if we increase the numbers of updates since the beginning of December, we're going to see a really big Russian focus on this area, significant bombardments 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And according to, for example, Syriac and Deep State map, as a result of Russian offensive operation, during the previous few days, uh, the Russians managed to establish control over at least this territory. So, the, as you can see, the progress is huge, the progress is significant. Uh, yet, we haven't received even a single geolocated confirmation of this progress, but uh, according to them, the Russians have entered the hill, this hill, and they're continuing advancing along the, and they will continue advancing along this tree line. Obviously, the Russians will start or renew their offensive operation along this line, and of course, they will try to attack the Ukrainian main positions on the hill using this road as well. So, uh, I'm not, I can't describe, maybe this is a real collapse of the Ukrainian forces, let's wait, because we still haven't received even a single geolocation of this progress, but if it's true, obviously today or tomorrow, we go, or during this weekend we are going to receive something. Furthermore, we got more details about the clashes for the area between uh, Popovsky Forest, New Cemetery and Hromova. Also, according to Deep State Map and Syriac, as a result of Russian offensive operation, they managed to establish control over this huge territory. And as you can see, this is another significant progress. Once again, we don't have any geolocated confirmation, just the messages from the soldiers on the ground, just updates according to mappers, just additional insights, no geolocated videos. So that's why for now we're not changing the map because we need more proofs. We need at least some videos or more strong evidence of this. But anyway, we're going to change this territory in the gray zone because obviously this is these are not just rumors. Obviously. These, all these talks, all these updates have some base, 
uh, have some right to live so that's why we need to follow them and we need also to show them and represent them somehow on the map as you can see according to all this uh, situation if we summarize the northern flank of Bakhmut has been collapsed and the Ukrainians are also withdrawing their positions and according to information we have according to the Russian information the distance between the uh, first block of Chasavyar canal and the uh, Russian positions is around three kilometers so at least this message from telegram from the soldier on the ground confirms update that the Russians got the outskirts of Popovilias uh, also another strategical hill on this direction and if the Russians can take control over this territory we can start counting days uh, when the Ukrainians lose the entire foothold on this side of the channel now we are moving to Solidar direction where we got also significant number of updates uh, the Russians st are storming this area and have been storming they started the storming operation a few days ago currently they haven't managed to achieve significant and strategical results even probably operational but they're pushing uh, according to some uh, sources Russian sources the Russians managed to bypass uh, to a significant distance along the railways and to capture the foothold in the vicinity of the river so according to some Russian sources without any geolocated proofs or confirmations the Russians managed to establish control over this territory so significant progress obviously the Russians as we see are continue moving along the railways and if they continue doing the same sooner or later they're gonna get Vimka. Now, this is too long to, uh, too far Vimka, obviously but they are able to let's say to uh, split this entire Ukrainian defense belt in two parts and basically to cut the Ukrainian defense and configuration of Ukrainian defense on this direction furthermore we got another video from the, the south of Sporna in Vanadarevka that was published by the Ukrainian forces by 10th Mountain Assault Brigade on this video we can see another Russian offensive operation using where the Russians were using significant number of Marines uh, and troopers and armored vehicles but according According to this video, the Ukrainian, that attack was repelled by the Ukrainians and the Russians had significant losses and were forced to step back. If we increase the number of days for two days, we see that yesterday the Russians were attacking along this line. Maybe both two attacks took place at the same time, but the videos was published just like in two days. That was the first Russian attack. And today we got the video of this attack. So we see and now we have update about the progress around, along the railways. So so now we see the configuration of Russian attacks. They're trying to move along the railways, along the brushes, along the tree lines. The Russians are not risking to enter the fields. So I'm talking about this territory because you know, probably this territory is mined heavily and there are no chances to bypass. And But um, when talking about the railways, we see that there is a progress just according to some telegram messages. But according to geolocated videos, the Russians were completely defeated on the south of Ivanodarev and Sporna. But we saw the same stories in Krasnogorovka. Just rem I remember the significant number of destroyed armored vehicles, but from one day to another, the Russians managed to br to cut that um, nuts and they bypassed, and now there are clashes almost in the eastern part of Berdychy. So this is another point of pressure in the main direction is to capture Sporna, Ivanodarevka, and to attack the Ukrainians in Sivirsk from the south. Uh, when talking about um, uh, Liman direction, we have uh, just uh, another information from the mappers, different mappers, as a result of Russian offensive operation. If you remember, as we discussed yesterday, due to the Ukrainian tank attacks, Ukrainian movements, we saw that the Ru Ukrainians were bombing the tree lines that located very far from the Russian combat area. And according to information we have, as a result of Russian offensive operation, they managed to establish control over these huge territory so before the next video we will not color this territory in red because we still haven't received any geolocate confirmation but we will color this territory into the gray zone to show that current there are heavy clavy clashes i expect that a uh, few days later we're gonna receive some updates and we will be able to color this territory as is that's in red color so the russians continue their movements along the fields and when talking about this territory i'm very surprised i'm talking about the minefields according to this geolocation videos on the russian attacks which i see that there are no minefields at all maybe the russians managed to demine them and to clear area but i'm not sure but and this is very weird and strange why the ukrainians haven't mined this territory during the previous year because this territory was captured by the ukrainians a year ago 
when talking about equipment's direction we haven't received almost anything the only video we got from the from the russian side how the russians managed to discover the movements of ukrainian forces in on the northern part of sinkovka and as a result of uh, russian aviation strike that ukrainian group was destroyed in this part of the village so we see that uh, this uh, video confirms the uh, proximate combat line in this area and that the next northern uh, city buildings is under, are under Russian control and those that are a little bit to the south are still under Ukrainian control. And that's it for the short video. Military Summary Channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.